Hello and welcome to Anyzville Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name is Anyz in a little 10 minute window of the rest of the world. Tonight I'm joined by Drew. We're going to get something to eat in the 50s diner here. Five We're talking nine. about 50s drive-in film. Yeah. I mean, that was keen and zowie, wowie. Wicked. Let's rock and roll. See, there's something classy about those days of the 50s and 60s drive-in films. I don't know if it was the music that the, or the outfits or what have you. I'm talking about those thrillers or shockers. And one of my favorites of that era is The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Watch it every Halloween. The Rubber Monster movie masterpiece. Oh, thank you very much. Your drinks are refillable. Oh, thank you very much. Now, there's no 1950s horror movie classic from the drive-in era that's more recognizable than 19, the 1950s classic, The Giant Healer Monster. Let me ask you something else. Have you heard the reports about a giant lizard? And this movie has it all. It's got an Alan Freed wannabe ripoff, which is great. If you're know if you're knowledgeable about the early days of rock and roll, you should know about Alan Freed. And it's got a great car and it's got like a classic hot rod in it. It's brilliant because when the Gila Monster attacks, the giant one attacks, everybody in the dance is already conveniently fled in terror, leaving behind a cardboard um dance hall. <laughs> the part about it is is the set. It looks like a giant terrarium. It's awesome. While he tries to find some tunes, I'm gonna talk about the killer shrew. This film is awesome. Classic sci-fi stuff of the time, and it even goes as far as to dress up dogs in shrew costumes. Yeah. And it had this terrible sound. It's, like, <laughs> it's just absolutely freaking, freaking terrible. And people were afraid of that stuff back then. I'm not sure if they were afraid of it, but they were entertained by it. So I mean, that's frightening enough. Now, besides like killer shrews and killer lizards and terrariums, there was also something else that scared people in the 1950s. The bomb. And one of the things about the bomb that scared people is that it would mutate things into various different huge behemoths and they would take things out. But what if circumstances were to magnify one of them in size and strength, took it out of its primitive world and turned it loose in ours? Then expect something that's fiercer, more cruel and deadly than anything that ever walked the earth. Even science was stunned. The new atomic miracle should have been mankind's greatest boon. Instead, when such power to cause phenomenal growth proved dangerously unstable. It was amazing. Amazing stuff. And it's still better than 3D. Atomic Age brought many, many uh, fears uh, the, the bomb, but it wasn't just creatures or, or animals or in insects that became big. My case in point, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Mm. That was a good one. Classics other than giant bugs and giant creatures. Another thing that the people were afraid of back then were UFOs. Oh, now, yeah. one of my personal favorites comes from the Ray Harryhausen collection, Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. I love this, this UFO crashing into the, into the Capitol building. I mean, awesome. Flying saucers have invaded our planet. 
Washington, London, Paris, Moscow are key targets. The whole world is under attack. Can it survive? I mean, seriously, that's like the Independence Day for the 1950s right there. And it doesn't have Will Smith. I know, but it's still good. Speaking of Ray Harryhausen, we can't go on without mentioning one of my personal favorites. It came from beneath the sea. That's right, a giant octopus attacking the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. A tidal wave of terror engulfs the screen as a raging monster from the dawn of creation attacks the world of men. attacking the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. 20 million miles to Earth. Jason and the Argonauts was another one that he did. Yes. That was a very good one. Well, he also did the King Kong, dude. King Kong, I think, was his first big hit. <laughs> Nine. Jerry Lee Lewis, buddy. Great Balls of Fire. Another reason they came out of the 50s movies, and 50s and 60s movies, was a brilliant, brilliant filmmaker. This guy was like the Spielberg of his time, a showman like no one other, as I'm talking about. William Castle, whom the Saturday Evening Post calls the master of movie horror. Do you believe in ghosts? I do. And you will too. When you come to this theater and see my picture, 13 Ghosts, uh, no more dictation today. This guy knew how to promote movies like nothing else. He was responsible for movies like 13 Ghosts. And The Tingler. Oh, House, House on Haunted Hill. Probably his best with Vincent Price. He did Price, William Castle. I mean, that's like peanut butter and jelly. You just you can't screw up. Not only that, one of the things that he would do is he would go to the movie theaters and he would offer insurance uh, company vouchers so that if anybody died during the screening of the film, their family would get like ten thousand dollars. Freaking brilliant! Because there's no way to actually prove it if anyone actually died, but it was just one of the great games, you know. Well, it's uh, still better than 3D. And you have like ghosts flying by on rigs on his in his premieres. All the great. Oh, stuff. and you have these special glasses to wear so you could see the ghosts. In the original 13 Ghosts, I have that. The Lion Ghost. Yeah, it's a lion ghost. The ghost of a lion. <laughs> the ghost of a lion in the basement. This is an all-American classic. Oh. And don't forget the good old days. You're much better than these days. Sure work. I was born in the wrong decade, I swear to God. Let me get this back to the dishwasher back there. <laughs> Thank you both. Come back. Thank you. We will be. Oh, we will. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for in this episode of Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name's Andy. I'm Drew. And that's all she wrote. Peace, peace.